Here we are. Uh, is that one on? Yeah. Can you see us? Can you see us? Um, first podcast of a new era of podcasting, the Capital Lowdown podcast. Just this is, if you're watching this, it's going to be like a time capsule. If you're watching this, you are here for the biggest launch of the best podcast the London football scene is ever going to witness. Ever. 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 We've got two podcasts lined up for this week already, and the guests are... We've got two joined next week. Two, two already next week. The guests are big this week. The guests are big this week. And next week. And next week. I cannot believe how good it's gone already, and we haven't even recorded anything. No, we've literally, this is, this is the first time we've pressed play. And it's already going so well. We, we have already forgotten the Instagram login, <laughs> the Twitter login, the Gmail login, uh, and the TikTok login, and there's another login that we forgot as well. Probably, did you say email? Uh, I did, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. We, we forgot oh, all the logins. Said, I've literally forgotten what he's just said, so that's how good it's going so far. <laughs> We're going to forget, we're going to forget we have a podcast, isn't it? What you are watching is the Capital Lowdown podcast. It's a podcast based around London, all the hottest topics, all the sports fiascos, everything that we can find and get our, our hands on. We will talk, um, uncover and discover. And, and interview. Interview. And, uh, yeah, an interview. That's the main part. Yeah, we're like, obviously, you know, we'll have... We're right, right now we're at uni, we've got cameras, we've got audio equipment. Uh, over the summer, it might be more remote podcasting. We'll still have good mics, but you won't get too much of this HD 720p, maybe even 1080p footage of our, of our beautiful faces. But um, yeah, I, I thought to kick things off in the best sporting manner possible, uh, we'd do a drinks for you. Good idea. Um, nothing to do with football at all, but we'll get, we'll just, we'll get things rolling before our guest joins and we'll, we'll, we'll drop some hints. Let you know what our... What's fueling us for yeah. the episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first hint is this jumper right here. Um, if you can zoom in, this is all you're going to get as a hint to today's episode. It's going to be in the title anyway, so there's there's no point. Um, but we'll we'll keep it quiet anyway, yeah, just in case I happen to not read the title. Yeah, I've gone with my my juice is an apple juice. It's from Lidl. It was one pound sixty five. Uh, it's truly juicy, not from concentrate pressed fruit, and it's really really nice and a refreshing. I myself have gone for the orange crush. I'll get, get it on that camera, you can hopefully can zoom in on there. This one's from uh, M&S, Marks and Sparks, Marks and Spencers, whatever you want to call it. Um, great little drink, I've had one sip so far. Um, I think it was also £1.65. Wow. Um, everything's just going perfectly already. Obviously the passwords, we'll forget about that. But what a start. Yeah. Um, the first episode is going to be huge. The first episode we've got a good guest. Um, I would say another hint is a champion. He is a champion. And uh, I'd say you'd be right. I'm trying to think of a right back joke. Uh, you'd be right to say he's a good footballer. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be right to say that he was probably one of their best defenders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ooh, another good one. Yeah. I watched, um, <clears throat> I, w I was watching a movie the other day, The Orient I I Express. Wow, yeah. these, these hints are coming out. Yeah. Well, um, if you haven't got it now, then enjoy the podcast. Um, I'm Will. You can find me on Twitter. I'll put the handle here. Oh, that's a lot of editing for me, though, isn't it? Well, I'm doing editing. So I'm, I might just put it in the description. Cool. But if you're lucky, you might get it there. Yeah. I'm Billy. My link will be in the description. I'm not putting it in front of me because I don't have that time. Um, before we get to our, our main man today of the show, let's have a little talk about the London football recently. Um, oh, well, I mean, it's, it's endless, isn't it? Obviously, we've got this team here that Billy's um, representing. Orient. Just claimed the championship. They are the winners of yeah. EFL Skybet League 2. More on that later, actually, I'd say. Yeah, I think, I think you'd, be, you'd be right on the money. More on that later. Um, I think... In the championship, uh, Luton are doing very well. They're the guaranteed the playoffs. Guaranteed, guaranteed playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, uh, Mill, uh, almost uh, guaranteed playoffs. Well, not guaranteed, but they kind of slipped. But um, because we're starting this podcast, I think they're going to start doing really well because they're going to be like, ah, oh, you know what's happened, lads? The capital lowdowns just come out. We got we got to play well. We got to play well. Uh, so, let's see, on. League League Two. Uh, no. Just League no one. Two, apart from Leighton Orient, we'll leave it. Um, 
Yeah, no one else is important. League one. Um, uh, Derby, no. no. Peter, Portsmouth, nice. Wickham, Lincoln, Charlton. More on that in episode two. Well, yeah. well there you go. Of course, with this podcast, we're, we're in partnership with Just Ball, who are a coaching company based in London, producing and helping nurture some of the best footballing talents in the capital. They have players up and down the country, professionally, semi-professionally, grassroots. We've got a big podcast lined up next week, in fact, or it may even be the week after with, um, with Kez, who is the main man behind Just Ball, one of the main guys funding it um, and pushing it forward to be as, as big as it can be. Um, and a lot of the athletes that we will get on, the footballers, the coaches, you know, they're trained by Just Ball. And you, you'll be hearing a lot more about Just Ball in the future. We've got it in the description below. Um, but today we're, we're focusing on Leighton Orient. So that's what's to come up on the Capital Lowdown Football Podcast. Our first guest plays for Leighton Orient. He's a right back. He's a Skybet League 2 champion and he's just been nominated for Young Player of the Year in Skybet League 2. Who is it? It's James Sweeney, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. Okay, so after Saturday, promotion was confirmed. Champions was confirmed. How are you feeling? Like I said, I'm a bit tired now. Um, obviously celebrated after, after the win on Saturday, Saturday night. And then um, myself personally, I went to the EFL Awards last night, so... Um, had a bit of a late night last night, but no, honestly, over the moon, I don't really think it's really, really sunk in yet, to be honest, that um, we've actually done the job. I think because we've done it so early and there's still three weeks, or not three weeks, three games left. So it's so real because it's almost like, not that we have nothing to play for, but like, we've done we've done the job already. But yeah, Saturday was an amazing day. All our families were there. Um, we spent a bit of time after after the game together celebrating so yeah it was an amazing day it's the first time the club have been in league one since 2015 um how big is it for the club and after that can you tell me about what the club have kind of done for you since you joined this is massive for the club um as it's been well documented um the club were literally one kick away from being in the championship um i think it was eight years ago um, I was actually there at the playoff final. Um, so, yeah, for them to be so close to the championship and to see what happened after the bus going into um, non league. And I guess at that point, there was a chance where the club was, was needing to go bus because of the previous owners done. Um, so, to kind of get back to where we, we kind of belong, it's massive for the club. Um, about ourselves as players and staff, it's kind of. Um, Phrase that has given the fans their club back, so obviously for the for the years following um, the the Italian ownership, it's almost like their club was taken away from them. And yeah, they've they've obviously had a tough time, but yeah, to kind of have um, two promotions in such quick, or well, not just two promotions, but two championship winning seasons in such quick succession, I think, amazing for the club. Initially, I never really like dreamed or thought of like winning titles or winning championships or getting promoted. Or it was just like a good environment for me to just play football and have fun, really. Just enjoy it because when, when, for me, when I was younger anyway, it was really about being professional, making it pro. It was just about enjoying football. So, in terms of that regard, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing for me and see from my career. Um, it's the club that's given me the opportunity to kind of have a kind of career in football. So, yeah, the club's that's been a big part of my life. Yeah, it means a lot to me. Leighton Orient are so unique, and um, I think one of the ways you've gone up, especially in the game against Gilligan, uh, it was unique the fact that you'd already gone up before the before full time. But what happened with the lights? Yeah, so it was a crazy day, honestly. So from the day I woke up and to, to when I went to bed, it was it was a it was a crazy day. I kind of, I kind of had a feeling that we would get the job done at night. But obviously, you never know on the day. And then obviously, myself personally, I was I was injured, so it was a kind of a mixed like mixed emotions. I obviously wanted to be out there to help the boys, but I wasn't a, I wasn't able to be be out there on the pitch. So the nerves were probably a bit more than usual because obviously I couldn't 
actually like affect the game or affect the outcome of the game myself personally. But yeah, from from literally the start of the game, we obviously had a man sent off early doors, so we're thinking bloody hell, like backs against the wall already, like the the odds were stacked against us, but we played incredibly well. Then obviously we conceded a few goals, um, conceded a penalty, and then just like crazy things happened. Obviously the lights went out in the stadium. Um, so the game got stopped, so we didn't play for about half an hour. Um, and then, like you mentioned, that also meant that we could then see the scores of other games. That kind of, we almost knew our fate before we went back out onto the pitch. So that was obviously a really surreal moment because I don't know about you guys, but that's never happened to me before. Where the lights in the stadium turned off, which meant we had to come off the pitch. But yeah, it was it was really surreal. So obviously, the games kicked off again. Yeah, another bizarre moment was that we've kicked the game back off again and we almost like weren't playing because obviously Jilling were winning 2 0. We knew we were about to get promoted. So it's almost like both teams had what they wanted. They they had the three points, they were safe. We had promotion. So like we got twenty minutes or fifteen minutes left to play and like teams are just passing it around the back, which again was really surreal. Um, so yeah, just an incredible night, and then um, as you probably saw, the celebrations were, were incredible. The pitch with the fans, etc. So yeah, just just an incredible night. A player being injured at that time that must be so difficult because I I was at the Sutton game just before, and I saw you were off the pitch as well. Um, and the media guys around me were talking about if all results went your way, they could have won the league that day, could have got promoted that day. Um, but as a player who's injured, do you kind of feel like, oh, do we? Can we kind of hold off for winning? Like, do you want to be on the pitch? <laughs> um, no, I, I wouldn't say. Um, can we kind of hold it off? But it definitely feels sweeter when you're on the pitch. So. For me, I can obviously compare Tuesday to Saturday. Um, and yeah, obviously, yeah, not being on the pitch almost feels like um, you haven't necessarily contributed as much. It's not as it's quite personal, I guess, because the, the boys were out there doing the work. You were kind of just on the side with your feet up. Obviously, as we know, that's not the case. It's, it's a body of work. It's all of the games prior to that. And even if you're a player who hasn't played, uh, massive amounts of minutes throughout the season, you still have a massive part to play. I think um, fans, just people in general, um, underestimate how important people are off the pitch, um, how they help help not only their teammates, but if you're an experienced player, how you can help the younger players, giving advice, etc. Um, how you are as a, as a as a trainer, if you're a good trainer, if you're someone who keeps the standards really high, you're someone that's pivotal to to a promotion. Um, gaining campaign so yeah on, on the day it, it felt a bit like because like a few of the lads were saying like oh should we like run inside and, and get our kit on so it kind of looks like we're part of it a bit more rather than just being in our tracksuits but um yeah where I was injured um like my foot was kicked like I remember like we were all jumping up up and down and like the injury I had my foot was just like crazy swollen so like I couldn't even pass the ball or anything like that so it was it was a write off, but I remember like running on the pitch and just like limping, that like, taking me half an hour to get to the to the celebrations, and then jumping up and down, but having to jump up on that one foot because I couldn't really put proper pressure on my left foot. So yeah, it was a bit. It was, I get what you mean in terms of like you want to play because you want to feel like you've contributed, but nah, it's, honestly, it, 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 it didn't really matter to me. I was just buzzing to get it done, and then yeah, I was kind of more. Everyone was obviously celebrating and happy, but I was kind of thinking, like, no, I want to be part of the celebrations or like, be on the pitch when you win the championship. So, yeah, that was kind of my mindset. And obviously, you mentioned earlier how you were just at the um, the EFL the EFL Awards last night. You were you were nominated for a Young Player of the Season. Um, obviously, I think it was Junior Chamadu won in the end. Um, but how how big was that for you to kind of? to be recognised, especially when on an individual level, like the start of the season, you know, you weren't really getting the minutes that, that I'm sure you would have wanted. But then I think come come January, February, when you got that chance, I mean, like you just, you, you couldn't be dropped. I think the first game you missed was when you were injured, I think. No, yeah, yeah you're correct. Um, no, yeah. Um, it was just, for me, it was just a blessing, really. I just felt really 
humbled and grateful because, like you said, we're in the start of the season or even like going into the season, if someone said this is how your season was going to play out, I would have I said that it was crazy. And then, yeah, even off the back of the little run I had, even if you told me a week before I found out about the about the nomination, I would have said, nah, no chance. Um, so, yeah, to get that was just, yeah, like I said, really humbling, really just really proud, to be honest, and just happy that um, I kind of got that recognition. I remember going into the awards last night, um, my parents weren't too happy with me, but I was kind of saying that whether I win or not uh, didn't really matter to me. I felt like the victory was just in being nominated full stop, um, especially where I hadn't played as much as the other players. And like you said, Juno uh, Jamaidu won, and obviously we know him very well. Like I've trained with him, um, Josh Ball, and I know the type of quality player he is. So for him to win now, I'm like, proper proud of him. And yeah, I couldn't, I'm happy that I've lost it to someone like him. But yeah, in terms of the night, yeah, it was just pretty surreal. Like that was one of the that's the first year for awards I've gone to and kind of mm. the first awards um I've been to in my career. So it was like it was a really surreal moment to be in a room with the likes of Vincent Company and just that really big like well known player. So yeah, it's just something that I'd love to to attend again in the future and yeah, just a really good experience for myself. And my parents like lucky enough for me, my parents were able to come. So yeah, they really enjoyed it and just yeah, just an experience that we, we won't forget. So yeah, I'm really blessed to have that. Um, Will was he, he was looking on Twitter earlier and he and he found some some videos. Do you want to explain? Because you know a bit more than me. We've come across a Twitter account. We we can't remember the name, but the hashtag the Sweeney hype train um, is trending. Um, you know the Darwin Nunes guy off TikTok who does the songs. This this he's got the video of him singing your name. Have you watched the videos? Have you seen these? To be honest, the first time I saw it, one of the lads um in the squad sent it into our into our group chat, and like he added me in the group chat. So I'm thinking, bloody hell, like, like what have I done? Like, what's this? And then I've gone on the chat and I've seen. I know, like, obviously, I know the guy from the Darwin Darwin Nunes chant. So when I've seen him, like, bloody hell, like, what's this? I was thinking maybe. He's like it's something to do like with Liverpool because I'm I'm a Liverpool fan, so I thought oh, maybe okay. that's something to do with that. And then when I watched the video and it's like Jaden, Jaden Sweeney, I was like, no way. Like to be honest, like, I was more like embarrassed than kind of like <laughs> that was the my initial reaction was embarrassment because first I know initially that like, my first reaction was that like, who's kind of like paid this guy to do this to do this song. So I've spent like the next like few days literally like asking all my mates like have you paid this guy? Like have you told him to do that? Like if you have like it's good banter, but like you're miles off it, this, that, the other. But yeah, the, yeah, it's it's a weird one. I don't really know how to react. Um but yeah, that's kind of my claim to fame now, to be honest. Not not how good I am at football, just just that chant. <laughs> so getting voted for young player of the year and the uh the Jaden Sweeney song, what's what's topping it? the Jaden Sweeney songs out there for sure. I think it's quite catchy though like I think I, yeah I, I want to hear it around Brisbane Road next season personally uh, I don't know about you but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that um, it's quite funny because I remember a couple of weeks ago this lady came into the changing room before the game because her son was being the mascot and she was like oh my god like, my son loves your song like you don't stop playing it around the house like he's doing my head in and I'm just like, I'm so sorry that like, I didn't mean for that. But nah, yeah, it's just funny. Like, it's, yeah, it's really funny. Yeah. Um, my next point, you, you mentioned them, uh, support from your, your family, your parents. Um, before the crew game, uh, there was all the messages of support. And uh, your one, I think it hit, it hit home with a lot of fans. It hit, lo- hit home from me, a neutral, not even a Leighton Orient fan. Uh, how much of your family as a whole done for you uh, coming fr- from academy football as a youth to now yeah it was massive um, yeah my parents they're the most important people in my life for sure um, and I think for me with that video it wasn't the fact that it had nothing to do with football which was like the most interesting part um, for me it was just the fact that they were saying that they was proud of me and just just more just like on a human level more than anything um like for me football's just a blessing so for me 
obviously my love is football that's my passion uh, for me to for that to be my job honestly I couldn't imagine doing anything else so that's honestly I mean it's a blessing but for me um yeah just as their son to make them proud like just the best feeling in the world um so yeah but yeah for that for the video before the crew game honestly I was crying the whole time like I didn't, I didn't even know what was going on with me um so yeah actually when I first initially saw it I didn't actually really hear or see any of the video because I was just like too busy crying from like all the videos before but no yeah I was thinking to myself after I saw that if you if you're not motivated to like go out and like um like have a good performance after that then I don't know what can motivate you but yeah like I said like my parents are just yeah the cornerstone for me and just yeah they're the reason why I'm the person I am today they obviously laid the foundations for me as a person and player and just yeah hopefully I just made them proud so yeah a moment like that surely brings the team closer together as well as you said going out onto the pitch I'd like to think if you know if you're playing six aside because we're never going to be professionals. If we're playing six aside and someone makes a video like that, I'd I'd be motivated to go and get three points. I remember I once got like this the the, the cameo that we were talking about how like someone had paid that guy to make a song. I I remember there's there was this TikTok guy I can't remember his name, but um, I once paid like ten pounds for this guy like he was like a comedian on TikTok, and I got him to like give us like a pep talk for for for, for one of our six aside games. And I played it to everyone, and uh, I think we won. I think like, and we like we always lose, and I think we won because of that game, um, because of that guy. But um, yeah, no, like, I'm sure, I'm sure that would have been a good moment, especially going out winning the league. And then there was there was a pitch invasion, wasn't there? I think I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a mini like, so I don't know. It was really weird. I've never seen it before. So obviously, like from my own personal experience, I remember when we went up in the national league. Mm. Um, that pitch invasion was that, that was mental yeah that was like a full on pitch invasion in terms of like you could hardly see any grass because um, like, I was part of the pitch invasion I was the ones like running onto the pitch um, and I just remember like all the players getting picked up in there like Joby McInerney Sam Lee like Marvin Ekpateta like, they were, like I remember just like looking up and just seeing them like on like just like almost like crowd surfing but I remember at the Gillingham game on Tuesday, they kind of like, the police had like this rope. So like, when the away fans all ran onto yeah, the Yeah, pitch, yeah, I remember seeing it. They kind of like, yeah, like they confined it with the rope. So it was called almost like a mini pitch invasion. And then again on Saturday, it was like a weird experience because like, I'd been subbed off. So I was like currently on the bench at the moment. I wasn't actually on the pitch. Yeah. Um, So like the final whistle goes and like, they had this rope thing again, but it's almost like they just dropped the rope and just like let the people run on. But because I was like already in the dugout, they kind of like roped the dugout bit. So like the, the fans could run onto the pitch, but they couldn't like get towards the dugout. So I was kind of in that area. So I didn't really like and understand or like um, have any really like understanding of like the magnitude of the pitch invasion. But yeah. I saw like quite a cool picture. One of my mates was on um, watching the game on the stream. It was like a really cool picture of just basically like all the fans that like, on the pitch and it it was really cool. But yeah, those those type of moments are like for me, I love them. But I just remember like thinking like kind of half buzzing and one that I got taken off because for me to get from the far side of the pitch back over to the dugout, <laughs> oh my god, that would have taken me ages. So yeah. See, that's the thing. I've always wondered what it's like for a player because I've uh, been lucky enough to do a pitch invasion. I think it was at like a non-league, like a local yeah. team. So it was about ten of us. But it was good. But like for for a player, is it just scary? Surely it's scary. Um, it's a bit scary. Yeah, when you're kind of like on the pitch and everyone's just running at you, it's a bit scary because you don't really know where to go. And then obviously it's just pure motion. Um, Obviously, the fans are just buzzing, you're buzzing. So at first, it's like, it's, it's, it's amazing because you're just sharing that um that emotion and the love that you have for the club and just, yeah, just that happiness for what you've just achieved. But then, like, what, what, what I always think is, like, imagine you're an away player. And, That's what I was about just, to say. Yeah, yeah. There's all these players around you. You must be, like, your head must be gone, honestly, because it, take, it takes ages because there's obviously, like, thousands of people in your way it does take ages for you to get through the crowd 
Mm-hmm. And I guess if you're a home player, because everyone's trying to like hug you, congratulate you, etc. Like it can take ages, but no, nah, I don't. For for me, I don't mind them. I think they're quite cool. But I feel like other players, um, they might have a different opinion. So yeah, I think I think they're cool to be. Um, obviously, you've been at the club since I can't remember what you've been at the club for age. I think you were like seven, eight was when you joined Orient. Some other yeah, way, some other that. yeah, right from the start. Yeah, yeah eight yeah. or nine. Yeah. And then it was um it was it was actually it, it was the late Justin Edinburgh who gave you your debut. It was in an FA Trophy game, and I think twenty eighteen or, or when you were seventeen. How kind of how 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 even more important was winning this league and getting back into League One, given obviously everything that's happened with the club over the last couple of years. And I think it was Justin who got the last promotion from the National League up to League Two. Yeah, it's massive, honestly. Um... Like, my mum always says it as well, like, Justin, again, played a massive part. I feel like without him, honestly, I wouldn't be where I am now. He was the kind of the, the person that, for whatever reason, saw something in me. Obviously, like you said, he gave you my, he gave me my debut and obviously, like, my first professional deal. So, he was kind of the reason why, um, or, yeah, he is the reason why I kind of kick-started my career, just in general, and, yeah. He's just a massive figure in the club, like you said. He got that um, promotion to get back into the football league and just to kind of like continue the job that he started to kind of almost like, because I have a bit, so like me, myself, Dan Hap, Craig Clay, Shadrach Hoagie, Rosa Turu, because we all played under him. We kind of like the ones almost carrying his legacy. So to kind of continue the job that he started just means so much. Um, that uh, yeah, he's massive. He's, he's he's obviously a legend of the club. Obviously, he's got a stand named after him, and it's quite nice because his son, Charlie, messaged me after saying that like, congrats on the promotion, um, and that like, congrats on the title. And I was just I just said to him, I hope I made like your dad proud because uh, honestly, he means how much like he means to me. And yeah, just it's a shame to see he can't be, be be with us now, but I'm sure he's looking down somewhere. Hopefully, I'm in mean, pride. So, yeah. We'll go to Richie Wellens now. Um, it took over. Was it? Oh, I think. Well, the thing I want to talk about is last season. So, um, I, I do work with Sutton. So, last season, you guys came to Gander Green Lane and they they beat Leighton Orient surprisingly. I think at the time, if you guys were on a decent run. Um, and after the game, he you could tell that he he loves to win. He's not the best loser. Can you can you say that? Is that the best way to sum him up? Yeah, 100%. Um, I would say, personally, the best way to sum him up is, yeah, I wouldn't say he's not the best. I'll say he more he loves to win rather than he hates to lose. Actually, well, actually I would say probably he hates to lose more than he loves to win. Um, like, even in training, he trains he trains every day um, with the lads and he's still got a bit. He's a very good player. But, yeah, hates to lose. So passionate. Even when... Um, we got to about when because obviously we've been at the top of the table for more or less the whole season so like even when we got into touch and distance it was on us like standards are so high he's meticulous with everything he does as as a coach and as a manager honestly he's kind of the best manager I've had in terms of the, his detail his tactics um, he, he has a game plan for every opposition his style of play yeah it's incredible in terms of Expectations, um, how he wants to play, etc. So, yeah, he's, he's been very good for myself, very good for my career. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like you've you've got three games left. Obviously, everything's you've, you've you've done what you need this season. I'm guessing he's still there. Richie Wellens is still pushing everyone, saying like, you know, we still got to win these next three games because these next three games are basically the start of next season almost. No, hundred percent. Um. I remember speaking to Omar Beckles about this. It's almost like you want to go out with, um, you want to go out in style. You don't want to be limping over the line. You don't want to be going out on a, on a low. Um, it's kind of used for a screen as the example where they kind of were in a similar position to us where they kind of wrapped up promotion early doors because they had such a good start and kind of almost limped, in, limped over the line. In terms of that, they struggled in, in the in the last third of the season. I kind of just got over the line, and 
we'll see everyone can see how they fared out um this season in League One, unfortunately for them. But yeah, we kind of want to take this momentum into next season, finish off the season strong. Um, I think in these last three days, three days, three games, sorry, it'll be a good opportunity for some of the lads who haven't played as much this season. And for someone like myself, I was saying to George Munker today, like you can't take any great um any game for granted. Um as you never know you never know when, when your last game's gonna be. So every time you get an opportunity to play in the league or play any game for just make the most of it. That's kind of how you got into these last three games. Like you said, something you need to do and it's just it's a lesson to be able to play to play in the league to play this game. So you can't take any game for granted. Um, so the da- Darius Rucker song, um, it's rock, rock me mama like a wagon wheel. Yeah, yeah. so that's, um, that's Monks. <laughs> um, so yeah, George Monker, he's like the, the team DJ before the game. Um, to be honest, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of, of his like, music selection. Or well, I can't really say I'm the biggest fan of that song in general, but I've kind of being forced to love it because yeah we play it before every game whenever we get a win we play the song and yeah it's kind of like as you've probably seen on social media it's kind of um it's now like synonymous, like synonymous with us now it's kind of awesome but um, yeah like i said monks is the is the is the is the dj before games and he's brought uh, about one or two songs to the team that have been kind of instrumental in our success this season I was literally saying to my mum earlier today, um, before the game on Saturday, they was like blaring it out on the speakers, like literally just before like it was gonna kick off. Like you see how like for example, um at um Liverpool, for example, they'll have like you never walk alone, they had like wagon literally just before about to kick off and like the whole crowd was singing it. And honestly, like that's probably like the loudest I've ever like heard at like, Brisbane Road, like it was proper like bouncing. And it was kind of like, it was quite a surreal moment because, again, like, I'm there standing on the pitch like, trying to like, get ready for the game. I'm kind of like looking around thinking, like, bloody hell, we're just like, everyone's like screaming wagon all out. Like, <laughs> what a chance have we got here? But no, nah, yeah, it was, it was that, that was a really cool experience for sure. I mean, other questions, you, you got released by Leighton Orient around under 14 level. Um, and then did you have to trial to get back with the O's? Yeah, basically. It was quite like a weird situation, I remember. So I kind of went through like a period where um, I was just struggling in general. I think when I was like really young, I used to be a winger. So I used to be like an attacker, like kind of known for like beating players, etc. And I kind of went through like, that period where, where like, I was being coached to kind of like defend because I was like good at attacking, but just couldn't defend to save my life. Like people could just skip by me like I was in there. So I was kind of being like coached and taught to like defend. But while that was happening, I kind of like forgot how to attack, if that makes sense. Um, so I kind of went through like a period of like one or two seasons where I just wasn't very good at all, really, to be honest. I kind of lost all confidence. I enjoyed playing football quite well in it. And yeah, just, just wasn't great. And I remember um, just them sitting down with my parents saying, like, look, you just have to be good. Like, like your heart, your desire, or like your enthusiasm for football kind of just gone. But they was kind of saying, but like we know, like there's a good player in you. So they was kind of like, we're not offering you a new deal. However, we want you to like go away, like enjoy your summer, come back in the new season, like, like rejuvenated, refreshed, and then kind of just like see what happens. Like if you do well and like. We see that you've improved and like, you're in a better headspace then give you a new deal if not then which is part ways um and it kind of in again in my head i was like well i was always of the mindset of like if i don't make out football i'll just do something else like, i didn't want to be one of them players that was traveling around the country i like, got different trials here and now i didn't want to do that and to be fair my hat goes off to anyone who does that because that's that incredible like dedication, perseverance, etc. But I just I just didn't want to do that personally for myself. So I was like, look, Orient's the closest like club to me. Um, I've been there for years that like, I might as well just go back, see what happens. And like if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If not, it's not. Um, 
I ended up obviously going back. Um, I've like, done really well. Like, I had like a renewed hunger. I think it's one of them ones where it's like when something's taken away from you, you realise like, what you actually had. So it was almost like I was taking it for granted because I'd been there so long. And I, I was one of the best players, but just kind of took that for granted. So I was like, bloody hell, like, it was almost like a wake up call. Like, oh, kind of just came back with like a renewed hunger. Um, and yeah, the rest of history, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then finally, I think before the Zoom runs out, um, I've got one more question. Um, obviously, now we can, you can slowly start to look to next season in League One. What's kind of, what would you say is like the early goal? Like right now, obviously, you haven't gone for pre season yet or anything, but like, what would you say you want to achieve for next season? I think on a personal note, um, definitely more games. So I think I've got. As of now, I think I've got 24 appearances this year. Um, every single season so far, I've kind of I've improved. I've got more games. I've got more games. So for myself, um, yeah, more games. My target would definitely be 30 games, 35 games in all competitions. Um, and I understand that going up a league, like it's a league I've obviously never played in before. There's obviously players in the squad who have played at that, that level before, so you know, they'd be better than myself. So. It's, 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 it's tough to get that but I think you always got to set your goals higher and then just see where you go from there but yeah definitely just getting more experience um, and just trying to improve as a player each and every season so yeah I'll definitely say that's one of my goals just straight off the bat cheers mate see you later pal love it take care <laughs>